Hello and welcome back, I am Arumba. thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our campaign as, uh, Spain? Apparently we're Spain now. Uh, it's time to go to war with Castile, who has no friends. He's apparently trying to chum me up with, uh, France. And my plan is to leave him with one province. We're gonna vassalize him after we've conquered everything he owns except for Galicia. Why Galicia? Because I want his capital to be in the Sevilla node, so that he always tries to steer trade towards the Sevilla node. And I want him to exist because he has Spanish ideas as well. And he's also taken exploration expansion already. Subject nations can't take exploration expansion ideas, but if a country already has them, w before you vassalize them, they will keep them and continue to colonize. So basically, by keeping Castile alive, we can have another four colonists working to build up the uh, the world for us. So we're going to take like all of this and then leave him with Galicia. And uh, the one thing we need to be careful of is that he could try to move his capital if it's the last cap, the last province in Europe. And I don't want him to move his capital down to here, because if he does, then he will suddenly try to collect in this node, and I don't want him to do that. So... I need to be somewhat tactical about it. Um, total war score cost for Castile right now is 83%, so I could actually vassalize him right now in this war. The aggressive expansion will be kind of through the roof, but I think we'll probably do that. Alright, let's play. Let's get our troops where they need to be. Um, I probably should have kept... Oh yeah, point. 0.13 per month with Vijanagar. Yeah, I guess we're not going to worry about that for now. Vijanagar does not want me to spy on him. Micmac pays war reps to England. He was at war. He is forming up his little colonial nation over there, and he does have the Treaty of Tordesius. He's actually still Catholic. That is the ugliest Iberia you've ever seen. Yeah! Well, you know what? Spain started it. Sorry, Castile started it. I'll, I'll remember what country I am eventually. We can enact a new government reform. Cool. So tier 5. We have options. Deliberate, deliberative assembly. It is time we separate the head of government from the head of state and give legislative assemblies of the land a larger share in the day-to-day -day rule of our state. This will enable parliament and national unrest minus one. Interesting. Royal Decree raises maximum absolutism by five. Absolutism doesn't apply yet for for quite a while. This this age won't end until uh, until global trade has been discovered for at least 120 months. So 10 years after global trade spawns, that is in 1610. So it's it's a really long ways away. That absolutism's probably not going to be worthwhile to wait for. Plus, we could always take 10 Corruption to switch to it later on. Like, you can freely move between these things. It doesn't take points to switch, it just takes Corruption. I think. Aristocratic Court. Gives us yearly Army Tradition Decay minus 0.5. General Estates. Production Efficiency plus 10%. Or we can do States General. By a union of states with representatives in the States General, we can more easily deal with pro-federal movements in our nation while retaining our monarchy. Through elections and events, the statists and the monarchists will vie for control over the nation. The effects of this reform and the frequency of elections depend on the which faction is currently in power. Does not have consorts or heirs. Four-year term duration. Status versus monarchy. Isn't that the Dutch Republic? I thought the... No, the Dutch Republic is like the Orangists. It sounds very similar to the Dutch Republic, though. So what do you guys think? That is Dutch Republic? I could have sworn it was the Orangists. Definitely not going to do Royal Decree because I don't care about the absolutism. Definitely not going to just take a half percent yearly army tradition decay. This is weak too. 10% production efficiency? Blech. Who cares? Um, so the options, it's, it's going to be one of the two. Either Parliamentarism or the, the Dutch Republic. The Orangists equal the Monarchists? Okay. Okay, so let me just refresh my memory on the Dutch Republic then. Netherlands. Alright, so if the statists or statists or statists are in power, you get 10% naval force limit modifier, 5% global trade power, one yearly Republican tradition. And when the Orangists, or in this case I think they'd be called the Monarchists, are in power, you get 25% land force limit, 10% stability cost, and one minus one yearly Republican tradition. 
One of the advantages is that it's an election, though, so I believe you get to choose between the different potential heirs and generally have, like, better monarchs overall. I am kind of sad to see we're going to lose our industrious heir if we do that. So, I, I actually think that Parliament sounds better to me. You can assign seats to Parliament, and that gives you plus 10% sailors, taxes, production, 10% of basically everything. In, in any province that's got a parliamentary seat. And then the parliamentary mechanics are great too, because every now and then you can get a discount on subject integration. Sometimes you can get an extra colonist for 10 years. Sometimes you can just get, like, it's it's pretty good. I like parliament. Or could you abdicate and then change government so you can keep the 631? No. It needs to be at least 60 to do that. Or rule for 20 years. Yeah, I'm going to go with Parliament, I think, guys. Let's try it out. So we'll do Parliamentism. No debate in Cortez. The debate will continue for at least 10 years. Let's see what the debate could be. Charter colonies. See, for 10 years, an extra colonist and 20 global settler increase. Charter trade company. We could get trade power abroad, 5%. Trade range, 20%. And an extra merchant for 10 years. Advisor costs. Grant concessions to the burgers to just gain loyalty with the burgers. I think Settlers just is got to be what we do. And uh, we don't have enough seats. Too few seats in Cortez. Why does it say Cortez? I'm not Cortez. I'm Spain. Game. Alright, so if we assign seat to Parliament, we get local sailors plus 5, 10% manpower, 10% taxes, 10% production. I am fine with that. It's the name of the Spanish Parliament? Okay. Now, the amount of cost that you have to pay for the uh, for the clicks is based on the development of the provinces. So sometimes you want to have like parliamentary seats that are very weak so that the clicks are cheap. But if we make like say Lisboa, we get 10% per, uh, tax modifier on 17 base tax. I'm just going to make Lisboa uh, into it. Um, it is still our capital even though we became Spain. I think if we controlled Madrid, Madrid would be... We'd have a decision to move our capital there or something. Okay. We can lose five Navy tradition. <laughs> this is a little trick you can do when you first um, first get your, your parliament active. Choose the mission, and then while you only have one seat, do the concession, and then it automatically succeeds. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and then more seats need to be assigned. It can't be assigned to anybody that owns the... Uh, if burgers control it, you can't use them. So, where else do we want to assign seats? Coastline makes the most sense to me, I think. Probably, for the Sailor Modifier. If you do not increase the number of seats, additional seats will be assigned automatically. Yeah. I'd rather be the one to decide who gets what. Autonomy is so ridiculously high here. But it goes down by 0.375 a month. Holy smokes. That's a lot. Alright, well that's at least enough. Did you keep Portuguese ideas? No, I did not. I, I went with the Spanish ideas because I wanted the extra colonists. I actually have five colonists for right now, and we currently have 200 global settlers increase. That's even more than Portugal had. It takes 500 freaking days to get a guy over there, though. It's a long time. Alright, we can play now. We can wait until we have a, a guy back, and we can go to war with this guy soon. Train up some new troops. We got some cannons there. And let's have all these guys to head that way. Yeah, these borders are horrendous, I know. We need to get them cleaned up, which is what we're going to do right now. Our truce with Aragon expires in... How long? 
47. Quite a long time then. I'll need an army down here to occupy whatever he's colonized in this area. Which we already have. Um, but I won't be able to walk through France. But France is my ally, so I can just ask him for access right now. I do want to do more investments here, yes. No, I don't. I want to, I want to save up for either the level 3 upgraded ports. Actually, level 2 ports should be done first, probably. There's just so many things to spend money on. Um, man. Let's check the colonies that currently exist to make sure that uh, we're not over committing to keeping a colonist there. Yeah, we're fine. Okay. The Alhambra, Alhambra Decree. With the fall of Granada, the last Muslim bastion of the Iberian Peninsula is now in Christian hands. Among our subjects, there are still, however, a large number of Jews, Muslims, and converts of questionable sincerity known as Maranos and Moriscos. In order to create a truly universal Catholic state, it has been suggested that we force our Jewish population to either convert or leave the country forever with what possessions they have that are not precious metals. So we can have the papal state like us, get tolerance of the true faith, and we get some trade efficiency penalty for 10 years or let them stay. I don't really need the tolerance of the true faith and I don't want to take a penalty, so we'll just let them stay. We'll use some of the current prestige we have to placate this guy, get him back to happy. It's time for the Inquisition. <laughs> uh, uh, I almost always like to just make them into generals, just because every now and then I, I like to have them do drill and stuff. Like, this army is pretty much going to exist solely for the purpose of, of drilling right now, to get our professionalism up so we can get more manpower. We've achieved a new mission. We've assembled an army. Congrats. Next is to unite the home region. Aruba, Spain is officially pro-Jew. <laughs> Hey man, Jews are great. Why, why wouldn't we like the Jews? Eight separatists are upset in the province of Pate. Oh right, I had I'd forgotten to raise the autonomy there after waiting the monthly tick. Okay, all those fellows can drill. This army is theoretically going to be ready for war with this guy soon. He doesn't even have a real fort, so that should be relatively easy. Let's get the... You know, the heirs actually got a siege pip. But this guy's still better, I think, overall. 15% siege speed. We do have enough troops so we can train another template here. Let's just add another 10 to that. Supply is 41, so that'll be a huge army of drilling infantry. And I needed to ask for military access with my ally, France. so that we can get down under these provinces here. Alright, I think we're officially ready for war. We're going to declare for, say, whatever's the highest war score cost here. It's like La Mancha. drilling. You're allowed to drill. It's fine. And this army is going to march equally onto these two. Shall we become defender of the faith just so that we can you know, claim that we're amazing? The papal, the papal influence does, does help over time. I wonder if there's any reason to consider um, just giving every single province a parliamentary seat. It makes the, the debates a lot more of a pain to pass, but these bonuses are pretty good, you know?
Lost in mind and space. It's fine. This is going to be the easiest war we've ever done, I think. Holland has declared independence. And it's certainly going to help clean up our borders a fair bit. I do not want to devastate the lands that we're going to conquer here. Like, Badajoz already has a little bit of devastation, and unfortunately that's going to kill our prosperity. Um, we're not going to take Galicia from him. Is Kisil bankrupt again? Yes, of course they are. Zosa is complete. Good. So right now, being uh, Spain, we have, out of everyone in the world, 4.83 morale. Which is ahead of the Timurids by a solid 0.8. We've got Spanish traditions, military drill, Enrique Diaz, power projection, army tradition... If I got my prestige up, we could get another 8%, and army tradition's also not maxed out yet, so... We're, we're slowly gaining army tradition at the moment, based on army enthusiasm, fully maintained forts. Looks like we need more forts in order to keep that, uh... army tradition at the max. I am building one already in Sevilla, though, so that should be fine. Let's grab uh, our heir and have him drill, too. I think I might even still have, like, the the same um, two cav we started the game with. Can you afford all the forts? Oh, absolutely. We're only paying like 16 ducats a month right now for the forts we have. We have a 10% reduction due to defensive mentality. Defensive mentality, so not even that expensive. Order in Rabul. Uh, gain money or gain more money. Yeah, let's make them a dishonest deal. I like money. I hear money's good. Mutiny. Hmm. Well. We're behind on Miltech, so I guess we're gonna lose admin points, even though it feels dirty. Let's see if there's any, uh... Hey, what do you know? We could actually take Diplotech and get more innovativeness. That seems kind of silly, right? I think it does. I do want more land force limit, though. Any barracks that are worth building? Look at that. This used to just cost us... 400 gold. Now I'm going to pay an extra 75 gold per per building. Blech. Blech. Convert or accept cultures. We don't need to do that because um, most of the cultures that we have are part of our primary culture group. Right here, you can see it's in the same culture group so we can get more of this stuff. This will automatically become accepted when we upgrade to Empire, which we're going to do as soon as we're done with this war. There's no reason to accept any of these cultures unless they are a culture that is not part of our primary culture group. So, like, maybe Shona culture we could consider. Moroccan is also not part of it. We could also consider boosting mercantilism a little bit. We have uh, only 11% mercantilism. It's not a bad thing to spend Diplo points on. I think I'd rather do that a little bit. Let's go, like, five clicks of that for now. Take La Mancha, please. Don't you need 75 prestige to become an empire? What's the rightmost alert? It is the alert saying that you have enough money to build trade company investments. Which I'm mostly just ignoring because there's a lot of other things that I want to upgrade right now. There's La Mancha. So that's 100% war score with Castile. We're going to demand all this lands. We're going to leave him with Galicia. I'm going to probably demand this too because I can. Well, it does cost Diplo points, but... It's part of... Uh,
I could always seize it from him later. So we take everything up there. I don't even know if he's colonizing right now. Um, he probably can't afford it. At one point he had colonized... Um, like France took Sao Tome. I think he colonized this and then I stole it from him. France ended up in St. Helena. It's hard to tell because he's the wrong color now, but... We're going to pay the Dipple points and that for vassalizing him. 71 aggressive expansion. Castile will be pissed, but can't join anything. Aragon, we have a truce with. Clemson, we have a truce with. Melindy doesn't matter. Tunis doesn't matter. Savoy. Like, we're probably going to get a coalition for this. Probably. Since we're going to pay the dipple points anyway, I think I will seize his land. So he'll be left a one province coastal subject with four four, uh, four colonists. The only problem is that we actually don't have a relationship slot for him right now. Um, I could consider getting rid of the alliance with the Pope, but I'd rather not. Also, I'd kind of like the Pope to not be so upset with me. Trying to have a lot of aggressive expansion with him, and we've upset the Pope. <laughs> Alright, uh, I'm going to wait until January to do it, I think. For now, I'm going to take a break here. We'll be back in the next episode, though. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.